family. What's good? What's good? Peace and shalom to y'all. I got word that Dr. Eric Mason was at this conference here at the Western Hotel trying to see if I can chat with him for a moment. Let's see. You know, I have several people tell me about this conference. I want to go uh, check it out for myself for some dialogue. All right. So, yeah, I don't know the name of this conference, uh, but he's supposed to be talking about like reparations and um, is Christianity the white man's religion and stuff like that. So, um, I'm about to go in and um, see. I was told that the uh, that they were letting out. So I may he may have left. I don't know. But um, I'm gonna check and see. find out where this is at. Just Gospel Conference. Alright. So, you know, what I try to do is if uh, people in the building, they in Atlanta, you feel me? Um, we're going to pull up and have a discussion. If they had a public event, you know, we don't go to anybody that it was not a public event. Um, but let me go ahead and find out where this is at. Um, let's see. Let me see. Alright, I need to ask. Let me go to the front desk. Hold on. Let me go to the front desk. Let me go ask this lady over here. Mm -hmm. I just had a quick question. Um, I just want to know where, where, where um, the Just Gospel Conference. I'm supposed to be uh, meeting my friend there. Where, what, what room is that in? <laughs> okay, no problem. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, <laughs> no, I just had a question. I'm looking for the Just Gospel Conference. What meeting room is that? You can go through these elevators, pass these escalators, and go to level eight. Level what? Eight. Level eight? Yeah. And then I can find it there? Yeah. So I'm taking an elevator? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You too. All right. So we found out the details. All right. Let's go see what's up. Let's see what's up. All right, let's see.
All right, Kyle, he just said they on lunch break from five to seven. If I gotta camp out here for a little bit, oh, I see it. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here you go. There we go. Let me. I'm. A, I'll pay to get in here too. Let me see. Hold on, hold on. Y'all take a look. So they're gonna be here tomorrow too, and Saturday. Oh, we up in here. Hold on, let's see. How we should we understand race and racial identity in light of the cross? Repar oh, he did his at four. Reparation. I think tomorrow he's doing. Um, where is it at? Back porch. Where's his other thing? I don't see his, but you know what? It's all good. All right, let me let's go up in there and let's see what's up. All right, all right. Okay, so we we up in here. I don't know why I didn't get a formal invite. Say, hey, why don't you come, you know, to this event and get the gospel message? You know, but I'm like, okay, we could do that. I come on my own, you know. I got my ear to the street, so I hear about these events. Um, all right, so here we go. Here we go. Wait, let's take a look. Right? We here. Uh, hmm. Okay, there's reservation. Oh, they got logos here? Uh, registration. Excuse me. How you doing? Do you know where I can go to registration for the event? Uh, yeah, they are straight to the right. I can oh. go through. I think until like seven, right? Oh, yes. oh they. I heard one of the passes say seven fifteen. A lot of them went to dinner. The event was seven. It says seven ten on the thing over there. Ah. Uh, okay. So, are they still taking registrations? Can I still get a ticket? Sure. Well, are you, you want to buy? buy yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I ain't running. <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying. Yeah, I want. I want to purchase. Do you? Uh, why? Why do you think that is? I don't got no reason for you. I'm just giving you hope. That you will be turned away, brother. All of that is a message in itself. So we're going to be. <laughs> um, all right. So I guess I'll come back at 7.15. What is this that you guys have going on here? Maybe I can do something in the intro. Well, we are one hoping I'll give you some information about us. We're up in Baltimore. What's that? And, um, organization that's really dedicated to making sure you have a trained Oh, before you coach. finish, I'm doing a documentary on my Facebook Live. Okay, it's cool. my first time coming to this event, so I just want to make sure you're aware so you don't think I'm trying to, okay. There's <laughs> no problem. Yeah, right. so. so we're dedicated to making sure that gospel workers trained in the urban context, especially low-income communities, so we need to make sure that they're healthy churches. There. Mm -hmm. uh, this organization, One Hope, has two real main strong angles. Mm -hmm. The first one is to make sure they find resources. Mm -hmm for those churches and those communities. So how do you help them get those resources? Well, that's why we're here today. We're, we're, now, we're, we're out here asking people for money. Do I, have to, <laughs> do I have to pay you something to get that information? No, no. Yeah, some information is here. If you want more information, so what's So what's this right here? That's if you want to part, if you want to become a partner with us and help churches that are in inner city context to uh, be established, to either be replanted or revitalized, depending on their approach. Are you only in Baltimore? 
currently their ah. church plant is in Baltimore, but they're open to any area. Because we in Atlanta. Sure. Hey, if you want to partner, even in Atlanta. So if I partner, I could represent y'all in Atlanta. Represent us? I don't actually know. I'm currently an intern. That's oh. the second. Um, these two folks, they were on staff. They can answer that. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, but, let me sign up. Yeah, yeah let me sign up. But uh, the second arm is they train uh, people to go and church plant into the same context. What do you mean? Can you explain um, that? So right now I do classes, um, learning life skills, and going through their program so that I can go and establish a church in a low-income area in an urban context. And you're doing that on behalf of One Hope or your own? I'm doing it on behalf of One Hope. Uh. So uh, you, would, I, would, I would just encourage you to, to speak with folks here or what do I do here contact information what, if you're interested in what's a vis oh visit up in Baltimore yeah, just um, so what I put yes no my initials if you want to visit you put yes oh yeah of course why not yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Get contact you I was there during the Freddie Freddie Gray incident oh, really? I don't know if you're if you're from Baltimore I'm yeah. from there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when Freddie Gray and yeah, Freddie Gray was um was you know killed by the police there and we went and we did a lot of activism, right? We were trying to get a lot of the gang members and the city people to get involved in politics so they can do a form of proactivism to prevent those issues from happening again in the community. So my question to you is, what do you think is the obligation of the black church when injustices like this occur? And the reason why I ask that because the subject matter that they're talking about touch on injustices and racial things and so forth. So what do you think is the black church purpose when these incidents happen, when injustice happens against our community? I think the black church's uh, role is any different than the white church's role. Mm -hmm. It's not both of them is to speak the truth, mm -hmm. and stand for the truth, mm -hmm. and take action steps, whether mm -hmm. it's politically, community wise, between brother and brother, between you and a politician, mm -hmm. that I promote uh, justice, truth, and love in our communities no matter what. So it's, it's no different to me whether it's a black church or a white church. Now we say that. Now are you familiar with uh, Dr. Eric Mason? I'm not familiar. You're not. You got to meet this guy. Cause okay. I, I came here just for him. Okay. And he talks about these type of contexts when they happen in our communities and the obligation of us to ensure that the voice of the black community is heard by means of the church, right? Mm -hmm. Because we feel sometimes we may be marginalized by what's called the white church. You know, it's black people that go to black churches only. You know what I'm saying? Like this. Yeah. That's there. Most of my life. Right. Yeah, Mine too. You know what I'm saying? So, so the thing is that if that if that doesn't exist. Then it's like, okay, if we don't have a mass of other ethnic churches coming into our community to require resources, not saying that they, they don't, but what is our responsibility when these things happen to prevent it? So sometimes people say, well, if we give the gospel in the community, things won't happen. But then we'll see that the places that have the most poverty and the most crime, they have a lot of churches. So that means that maybe the churches are not equipped to deal with activism in that, in that fashion. Because the church is very active about, what, 60, 70 years ago. For the civil rights movement, right? Yeah, so why are we don't have the same kind of coalition mindset to come together and actually speak on injustice, right? Right, right. I just just want your yeah, two cents on that. Those are big questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I couldn't really tell you the mm -hmm. exact reason why. I can tell my opinion. Yeah, that's 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 all I want. My opinion is very personal. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell you, it's a simple fact that the black church. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about the black church? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say the black church has lost its gospel center. Wow. So if That's it's lost heavy. its gospel center, it's no longer concerned about truth, about justice. So what do you think the thing is now? That's prosperity? Oh, yeah. Come on. Is you, it because... You didn't even have, have to <laughs> let me tell you, right? and you already said yeah, it. That yeah, lets yeah. you know. It's yeah, serious. we both want to call exactly. Or we can see what's church. obvious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so why is that? How did the shift go from the gospel message and civil rights, you know, and shift over to prosperity? I can tell you why it happened. I just know it happened. I'm so young. I wasn't, How old are you? I wasn't watching 27. Oh, I wasn't yeah. watching Man, you're saying you're young like you're 19 or something like that. I wish, oh, I wish I could say <laughs> right? And then you could do it all over again, again, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, I mean, I really don't know exactly why it happened. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it happened. Mm -hmm. I, I've always just thought that the black church was up. <laughs> Kind of uh, because of the types of ways we approach fellowship and mm. teaching, that yeah, we've always been like a, a cesspool for theology and teaching. And so uh, we've always taken a little here and a little mm -hmm. there, despite the movement. Mm -hmm. White church is a little more uh, straight cut, yeah, uh, more it's, structured. It's and, exactly. and if you say anything different, we don't like you. Mm -hmm. White church is like, oh, everybody, let's come and talk together. <laughs> yeah. Right? So that talking together mm -hmm. allows the people who talk prosperity to come into the room, to share their views. Mm -hmm. And everybody say, oh, okay. 
So first generation said, I'll add this to the gospel. Wow. Second generation said, I'll replace the gospel. Well, you know, uh, yes. Apostle Paul speaks against that. Mm-hmm. You know, Absolutely. specifically in the book of Timothy. But this He's is... The, on the way exactly, now. right? And, and that there are people that will be after filthy lucre, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the question I have for you, and this is my last question. You know, I don't want to yeah, okay. take up your time. But um, the last question I have is... Um, in regards to the black church, when was the black church established? Do you know when that occurred? Because I'm on a mission to kind of like get these details um, so I can do more research and put together like a nice little documentary. That, that question of history is beyond me. Okay. Do you, you know anybody who can touch that? I don't know, but I'm sure you'll find some, some folks here. In here, right? Who will answer, you, who will answer that question. Hopefully I can get that. You are not far answer. from a good answer right? on that. Yeah. I just got to wait till they finish eating first, yeah, right? Yeah, there are a couple speakers here who definitely... Did you see any of the event? History. Yeah, I've been here all day. Oh, you did? How yeah. was it? It was good. It was great. Um, they, they touched um, on reparations last. Mm. They talked. And that was Derek, Eric, Dr. Eric Mason. Yeah. He's the one, according to his itinerary on his social media, touched on that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they talked on what, what's required first before we can have a conversation. Mm-hmm. We have to establish Bible truth. Mm-hmm. Bible is true. That, and that it speaks to the situation mm-hmm. and then ask God for the authority and then move from there all the way to reparations. So what's your idea on reparation? Do you believe that we're entitled to it? Do you think we should fight for it? We should lobby for it? We should advocate for it? What's your position on that? I'm all, I'm all for reparations. However, I'll tell you, before I came here today, I was, I was wanted to hear a presentation on why they thought it was a biblical necessity, mm. not just a nice idea. Exactly. Or people just trying to come up, right? Yeah, so they, I think got a reparations conversation today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Help me out with that personally. So, uh, That's the, uh, the panel discussion, Dr. Dibidi, mm-hmm. he, uh, he, uh, he used Ezra, mm-hmm. the Jewish nation, as an example, mm-hmm. the people who uh, received assistance mm-hmm. from the government and uh, exactly. paid back Politically, they what they had lost, lost. Exactly. even though those current people weren't the particular ones. And I bet you didn't even put the two together before. I never put <laughs> That was never heavy, right? Yeah. So, two more questions, I'm out of here. So, uh, first question is... Um, since it's kind of maybe kind of difficult to kind of trace when the origin of the black church occur, um, you know, are you, are you, do you identify as African American? Yes. Okay, so your ancestors came from West Africa as far as you know. As far as I know. So how did the gospel come, get to our ancestors? I also have family from, that's ancestry from West Africa. How did the gospel come to our ancestors there in West Africa? Or, or did it wait until we got here? So again, I don't know all the historical Just give me your opinion. things about um, the gospel in those regards. But mm-hmm. um, I'm saying Africa in general, mm-hmm. the gospel was in Africa. By, yeah, was shared by the first century Christians. Mm-hmm. It was established from Egypt and Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. As far south and east in Africa mm-hmm. as you would typically go, mm-hmm. uh, I don't really know how far south, but I know mm-hmm. it's pretty far. Yeah. So you can come over the outside of the Sahara <laughs> Desert that's in the way that's what about of the that gospel ministry mm-hmm. uh, where they're kind of cut off from it. So exactly. Quite possibly, even though white people used uh, religion in very nasty ways, uh-huh. quite possibly. They were used uh, to bring was, the gospel to us. It was might have been used to bring the gospel to West Africans. Now, that's really interesting because if their approach to the gospel was something that was centered or focused on like economics, you know, because, um, you know, their role there also was to secure a base for resources to flow back to the nations that they represented. Um, you know, you have uh, the Anglican Church, I know, that went into Nigeria and uh, settled in Nigeria. And it was like maybe three other organizations actually went into Nigeria, who took the missions assignment to go into Nigeria. And if you go back and research um, some of the methods they took, I agree with you, some of it was nasty. Like a lot of times that they were tell the British Empire, hey, the practices that these people are doing are inhumane, right? And they're attacking us. And then they would come and bomb the cities and everything like that, and then, or the towns. And then the people would like eventually cave in and say, okay, you know, that's, that's really wicked, really wicked. But you're saying if God can still use, like what Joseph said, they meant for evil, but God meant it for good, Absolutely. that he ensured that the gospel still made it through to those people. Right. And to be clear, Joseph, he said that, He's referring specifically to his own personal slavery. Mm. Not a slavery of a brother, mm-hmm. not a slavery of a friend, not, a, not a local ancestor. Mm-hmm. His own personal slavery. And if you read uh, Christians who were slaves, mm-hmm. who were Africans mm-hmm. in America, mm-hmm. 
after they gained their freedom, were able to give uh, have the ability to write something that haven't kept for us today. Uh-huh. Those folks, uh-huh. if, you, if you read their writings, you'll you'll see a similar tone. Uh-huh. Of how, uh, hate and abhor slavery, uh-huh. they can still recognize the spirituality and the gospel, the Christian, the Christian faith, and how how it came. Have you heard about Have you heard of the Negro Bible? So the Negro, yeah. So the Negro Bible was a Bible that was given to the slaves that had um, huge chunks of the Bible taken out, right? So you had a good portion of the Old Testament thrown out. You had portions of the New Testament taken out, especially the one that says we are all one in Christ Jesus. That was taken out. Um, but the one that says slaves obey your master, that was still in there, right? So the slave gospel, the slave uh, Bible, the Negro Bible, you can look it up, right? You can actually get it for free on uh, archive.org. And when you read it, you'll see there's a preface to it. And then you'll see actually the books that they took out because they didn't want us to get the full context of what the book was talking about. And when certain slaves did, they revolted. Now, is that a justified revolt for a slave to read the entire context of the Bible, identify injustice, and then want to fight against that oppression, whether it's through the means of abolitionists, being abolitionists, or maybe physically? Right? Are they justified for the mistreatment that they've endured to do that, from your perspective? It's always okay to cry out for freedom. Never so physical, like trying to physically get yourself away from the situation, whether that means you may have to defend yourself or whatever, that, that's justified. Do you believe it's justified or can be justified biblically? If somebody's enslaved you and then they maybe raped your sister or killed your brother, and you're like, oh, this is crazy, and you read the Bible and you get hope. You get that one hope, like, okay, maybe I can get out of here, but I may have to fight the slave master. I may have to fight the overseer that he has over me in order for me to get to freedom because we shouldn't be suffering through this injustice, right? Right. I, I think it's justifiable. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a mandate. Oh, no, no, that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying it's justifiable. So we should just endure. Um, so there was like about 200 uh, reported slave revolts or attempts to revolt. And a lot of those slave revolts, they either um, resorted back to their ancestral practices or religion and or they read the whole Bible. Right. But I mean, take, take this for example. Mm-hmm. Put yourself in their shoes. Uh-huh. You have a brother says, man, I'm going to run. Mm-hmm. I'm going to fight. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to kill my children. Mm-hmm. I'm going to kill my wife. Mm-hmm. I'm going to kill my sister. Mm-hmm. I'm going to kill my mother. Mm-hmm. That brother who's staying, ain't nothing wrong with him. <laughs> that brother loves his family. So, that brother who ran, ain't nothing wrong with me. So the brother who who decide, hey, we're going to turn up and we're going to fight against the slave master because the Bible said physically so we can save our family and we can get up out of here because this is what the Bible says because technically, but look, technically, because a lot of these slaves also signed up for the war and some of the slave owners was telling the slaves, hey, if you work for the Confederate Army, we'll give you freedom. That means they still had to go and fight and kill somebody in the process anyway to get their freedom under false pretenses. Now, one of those promises is 40 acres and a mule. That was a false promise that was given to the slaves within a false context that if they fought, that they would get these things. But guess what? The side of the war that promised it, they lost. <laughs> so, you know, but some of them were allocated these um, these prophecy and resources, but it was eventually taken away from them by the states. You know what I'm saying? So, again, I... I uh I don't say that I know. Mm-hmm. This is me personally. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't know what the conference people will say. Mm-hmm. But I know uh, see a biblical mandate to uh, act violently against mm-hmm. anyone. Mm-hmm. I don't see, but I don't see it being forbidden. I think that's uh, for us. That's left up to us in our personal circumstance. Mm-hmm. Martin Luther King of course, uh, fight for his freedom mm-hmm. in a very uh, different way, a different way than someone else might think. And, uh, and I don't have a problem with either one of them. <laughs> but even, neither of them. Neither one of them. Right? Personally. And I don't think the Bible has a problem with either one of them. So, so, so mm-hmm. that's about that's about all I can say. What do you think Good point. we can do today? We can do a lot today. With Jesus Christ. We can do a lot today. To help. But we have to change the context. First, we have to show how the God of the Bible says that we need to deal with anybody that's oppressed, anybody that's an orphan, anybody that's a widow, we have to look at that to see, okay, if God detests that, then what obligation does the church have to respond to that? Do we just speak from the pulpit and then people go home at the end of the day, or do we get active in the community, politics, um, social activism, in order to make a change in the community? So I believe that's the obligation of the black church, because they have a history of actually doing it. Not pick up, not pick up arms. Hmm? Eh, not really. I'm kind of like, 
Um, I mean, I'm trying to figure things out. I would just put it like that. <laughs> That's what, why I come to conferences and stuff like this. What? Do you believe salvation is necessary in order Oh, wait, to just so you know, I told him I'm recording as part of a documentary on my Facebook line. I, I just want to make sure you're okay. I don't care. Okay, because I got to tell you, people that because yeah, otherwise, yeah. it would all why you put me on you camera. Get sued, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Um, so go ahead, I'm sorry. Do you think salvation is necessary in order to get heaven? Do I think salvation is necessary? It depends on how you define salvation, right? Okay. So, what's your definition of salvation? Well, I'm, what, what do you think? So we're going to go to the realm of soteriology, which means to be saved, right? The soter is the, root, the Greek word, according Greek word, meaning to save. Okay. Salvation, it comes through, according to the Bible message, it goes through Jesus Christ, right? Okay. And believing on him in order to be saved, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's other things that's in the text that make me kind of question whether or not how authentic that that message is, mm -hmm. right? So like that's what I'm saying. You said like what? I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, it's all good. Wait, um, so... So the reason why I say that is because um, when I read the uh, Synoptic Gospels before I get to the Pauline epistles, in the Synoptic Gospels we see when Jesus comes on the scene in Matthew chapter 4 and he's preaching the gospel, in Mark chapter 1 he's preaching the gospel, um, he said the message is to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And then he said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, depending upon which Synoptic Gospel we're reading. And then as he's going out, you know, he's get, gathering apostles and the apostles that he's gathering are from his own tribe, his own brethren, right? His own people, his own community. And then as he's acquiring these individuals, he then disciples more. So you see the 70 that also goes out in Matthew chapter 10 as well. And when he sends them out, he gives them a very strict message. He says, take this gospel of the kingdom and I want you to go to your own brethren, right? Don't go by the way of the Gentiles or the Samaritans. Go to your own brethren and bring this gospel of the kingdom to them. So I try to try to figure out... you get go to your own? Yeah, you got the Bible on you? I know you got a sword on you. One of y'all got the Bible on you. You got the Word of God on you. I, my phone is recording. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I get it. Sure, go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Correct. Is this one of the brothers you were telling me about? No? He said there's some um, <laughs> uh, people who uh, work for the organization that can answer questions. Well, no, I don't know if that's him. That subject, that's not what we were talking about. We were, talk, we were talking about One Hope at the time. Yes, One Hope. And he's a brother from One Hope. He's from One Hope, right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. How old are you? 31. Just turned 31. When was yeah. your birthday? March? Oh, happy, what's, happy what's belated birthday. Uh, Matthew chapter 10. What's your birthday? Um, you can start at verse 1. Verse 1? Yeah. Okay. Matthew 10, verse 1. Read, huh? No, you don't have to you read. You can scroll through it. I just wanted to show you the content. No, um, I'm, I'm here for the keynotes. Oh, okay. oh, you're a speaker? No. Oh. I'm looking for a speaker. Hey, um, oh, okay. so we're on break right now? Yeah. And so I think everyone will be back around anywhere between 7.15 to 7.30. Okay. And then that's when they'll open the doors back up. All right, so let's first see that. All right, so where we at? Yeah, no problem. Okay, there we go. He can tell us. So you, you just trying to go to all the speakers and ask people questions, bro? No, I'm I'm yeah, looking so for I'm looking he's for trying, Dr. Eric Mason in trying, particular. Yeah, he dipped out. I just, he dipped out. He left? Yeah. For the day? They had lunch. I mean, he had to go feed his Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying besides that, is he coming back? Uh, I don't know if he's coming back tonight. Tomorrow? I don't, I don't, think, I don't think he's coming back tomorrow. That's what I was looking for. Because yeah. I follow him on social media and I interface with him. So that's why I want to yeah, see I him in person. Yeah, I feel that. You're Damn. Hebrew Israelite. What makes yeah. you think I'm a Hebrew Israelite? Who yeah, told you that? All, this, all, the, all the rhetoric. You, <laughs> you said the rhetoric. Down, you tried to talk about a documentary. I am. Yeah, I am saying? documented. Yeah. But this is what you're a Hebrew Israelite. Well, I don't call myself a Hebrew Israelite. I ain't gonna say you what I'm saying call is... yourself, but what I'm saying is you would have lied. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm still no. scrolling for you first. Oh, hold on. So, <laughs> okay, wait. So let me right. deal with this and then we can follow up absolutely, on that. Absolutely. All right. I mean, everybody commenting on your video right now, like, yeah, get him. No, 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 because I don't get down like that. Nah, that's not how I do. You can ask the brother. We just had a very yeah, amicable discussion. I, I overheard something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was uh, very different from the All right, let's go down. Oh, man. Oh, which Bible is this you got? Well, you know, you that's better, what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like this. And, uh, show me your verse. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's see. You're supposed to have a chapter and verse. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. it. Yeah, I got a chapter and verse, All right? right? Yeah, you right, might not so. see too many familiar phrases. Well, why you say that? I'm just saying. <laughs> so you go ahead and find it. All right. So, the word. So, so read here. Read verse 5. Verse 5. Yeah. 
He says, don't go All by right. what the territory of the Got Goyim. You. Okay. Right. Keep yeah. going. Keep going. That's good. You, you oh, you just want me to show it to you. So, right. yeah. so, so the reason why I was asking your question, because I was trying to understand the dichotomy between the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of Christ. Right. So we hear uh, Shaul or Paul talk more about the gospel of Christ being the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Then he goes into his, his Christological view in regards to his pre-existence when he goes in the book of Colossians, etc. Um, but when Jesus was going out, he was sending his apostles to bring the gospel to his community. And um, the message that he told them to give to them is to repent for the gospel for the uh, kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? So he's so I'm hearing him give this message. And then as I'm reading, I'm seeing that maybe because it's different context, right? Like Shaul was going towards the Gentiles. He said that in Galatians chapter 2, that he was given the right hand of fellowship to go to the Gentiles. And, you know, Peter and John and James and them, they was going to the uh, circumcised, right? So his mission was going to them. So maybe going to them, he had a different angle in regards to presenting the gospel that looks different than what Jesus was saying in the book of Matthew. So you think Paul and Jesus had different gospels? No, no, no. I'm saying I'm looking at things in the text that seem to be anomalies, and I'm asking for people to see if they can respond to that so they can help me get an understanding. What do you think the contradiction is, is what I'm asking? So, so the gospel of the kingdom... What do you think is diff two different gospels? Well, because it's two different audiences, right? So one was going towards the children of Israel, the other one was going towards the Goyim or the, the Gentiles, okay. right? Let me just ask you to read this one. Sure, which one is this? Verse 19. So, okay, got it. <laughs> it says, therefore, go and make people from all nations like into all nations, all yeah. nations, yeah, um, into Talmudim, immersing them into the reality okay. of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach Hakodesh, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and remember, I will be with you always, yes, even until the end of the age. That's interesting. So Jesus gave a specific command early in the mm -hmm. Bible about going to the brothers, mm -hmm. the lost sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then he gave another command by going to people from all nations. Now, and Paul only says uh -huh. that he was commissioned to go to the Gentiles, but to Israel first. He looked like he was following Jesus' so, instructions. So, so Peter, so Peter and, and the other disciples, were they going to the Gentiles too? Well, we were talking, your conversation to me was about Paul and Jesus. Yes, this is, this is about the gospel. And I'm asking Bringing the gospel. question, does Paul look like he's following in Jesus' footsteps? Does he look like he's following Jesus' footsteps? If he goes to Israel first and to other nations second. He did, what does it say he went to Israel? If you go to Galatians chapter 2, he said specifically he goes to the uncircumcised. He does say that. So he didn't say nothing about going to his own people because they rejected him and tried to kill him, right? Look, access. He always starts his preaching off in the synagogue. And then guess what? They kicked his behind out. So but he went who, to the But who was there? Hold on. Who was in the synagogue? The Pharisees, right? And they're they the Sadducees. They're Jews. And so he went to the... But who else came? No, no, no. He, he went, went to the to synagogue. The, and who was in there? But the Gentiles was so there too. Paul went to who? He went to everybody. To the no, Jews? no, no. The no, because when the Gentiles, when the Gentiles tried to reason with him, he told the Gentiles that you can meet me on the Sabbath. No, I'm on the Sabbath. So, you, so you're just you're saying mm -hmm. that it was only Gentiles in the synagogue. No, 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 no. I'm saying when the Gentiles tried to ask or listen for this word of this yeah. new guy going around talking about stuff, yeah. he said, "You got to reason with me on the next Sabbath." He so was Paul, to come to so the, Paul did not go to the Jews. That's what you're telling me. I'm you saying, told. I'm saying his his when he got the right hand of fellowship in Acts chapter 15, based on him actually meeting the apostles when they had their first get together or their first council, he was commissioned at that point to only stay towards the uncircumcised. Prior to that, he may have encountered other Jews and spoke to other Jews, as we've seen earlier. So you're saying he had a special day where they told him to only go to Gentiles. So prior to that day, uh -huh. Paul's he was, he was He was happy. The, he was giving it to everybody. Giving it to everybody. <laughs> well, you know what? So, Jesus gave it to everybody. So look. Paul gave it so to look, everybody. So if I'm going to give it to everybody. I got you. No, no, no. I'm not, who's denying that? I'm just saying, I have no issues with that. I'm That's, just saying. I'm just saying because he, he brought it up. So I, I thought it was text, great. And I admitted that it was it was what you said it was. Yes. And, and if I we admit, admit that. that Jesus said here. Can I ask you a question? To go to everybody. But who was, was Paul there at that time? And. When this happened? Who says this? Was Paul there at that time? I mean, he's not present. Okay, so he's not present. But so, Jesus instructs who to go. Who? His disciples, right? That's who he's talking to, the 500 before he raised up. Those 500, did they actually go out and bring the gospel to all the world? Yeah. I was going to ask you what Jesus' command was. Yeah, but then he follows up in Acts chapter 1. I'm trying to follow Jesus' command, not you. the failures of man. No, I got you. But in Acts chapter 2, when they had to wait for Shabbat or Pentecost, 
it was a feast day, right? And then it said Jews and devout men out of all nations, they came to hear the message. Devout men also throughout most of the New Testament are called God fearers as well. Yes, that's what I was used for them too. People who entered into the synagogues mm -hmm. and learned the Jewish text. Mm -hmm. and not have, have not yet taken on circumcision. We get that like Ethiopian eunuch who went and met with Philip, right? And got baptized yeah, by Philip. Right. So these are people that also cleaved unto Israel. So this was nothing that was like unusual. I mean, there are Gentiles that was amongst them, right? But what I was saying was when he was telling about the gospel of the kingdom, the disciples were speaking to him and he would prophesy and said, well, I'm going to be handed over to up to the authorities to be crucified, killed, and so forth. And they was like, what? They was perplexed. And as during the discussion, he's like, but don't tell nobody. Well, I, I You're telling me to be quiet. Saying, I, I just wanted you to just yeah, admit yeah, for your you. followers on, on, on the YouTube uh -huh. or, or Facebook. Yeah, those Facebook. Facebook. You can say hi to them. I, 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 you know, I just like having extra. Hi, <laughs> that, your verse, hey, don't take me off of it. I'm interested in that. At the beginning of Matthew said I'm serious. he told him to go to the lost sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. And my verse at the end of Matthew, mm -hmm. he tells him to go to people of all nations. We agree that those is what the scriptures say. Yeah. We they to, on that. To. He told them to go to the nations. To now, were they were, from all was, were the Israelites scattered into oh, all nations? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> hold on. No, what did my text say? <laughs> yeah, hold on. Funny, I know it was coming, but let's go back to the text. Let's huh? go back yeah. to the text. What did the text say? Can I ask you a question? Don't ask me anything. What's up? Hey, Jen. What's up? What's up? Can she go to heaven? Of course. Can she get to heaven? Why how, not? How would she make it? You said, how would she make it? Yeah. The same way that any Gentile would make it. All how? of us, you, you, how? all of us are Gentiles, how? right? How? The same method that Paul would do the gospel that Paul was preaching. I'm, she come to you and say, brother, I want to be saved. Well, you you want to be saved? I said, cool. Let's give you the scriptures. And we go into the gospel. What's the gospel? You can be saved just by reading? No, not just by so reading. Tell well, me hold on. All right. So let's go into it. Excellent. I'm glad you say that, all right? right? All right. So when we go to, to Romans chapter, we can go to Romans chapter 10 and we can find out and then follow up with Romans chapter 11 about the wild olive branch that can be grafted uh, he got, in. He got a long gospel. No, because Romans, Romans not chapter, not chapter so wait, the gospel is not in Romans chapter 10? No, 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 I don't, I, I want you to continue. I just, because mine is so short that I just want you to read for your fellas <laughs> what the verse said about people and nations. Because let me see, you said people, Jewish people mm -hmm. in all nations. What does this say? No, I said whether well, Jews scattered to all nations because if he's telling them to bring that gospel, to actually them, not at the went. time, but though not at this time they weren't scattered. Absolutely not, they weren't scattered in all nations. Why not? What but, happened to the northern tribes in what First Kings chapter? Wait, 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 wait. First Kings chapter seventeen, go. the northern tribes wasn't taken here into go. captivity by the Assyrians. What, what do you think all nations means? All nations is all the known world at that time. So, Oh, so it's only Jews. Only, 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 only Jews. Yeah, because Jews. the people that's writing from that text did not know about North America, South America, so Central only, America. They didn't know about the Australia. So Where the people at that time know about that word right there? And, and we can go into the original language and see what that is. We can read it in the Greek. You tell me. What okay, I'll bring it up. Well, let me get my tablet thing because I don't have my phone. But yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with that. Is he asked me a question about that? I want to address that too, because I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess. I'm gonna let it be. No, 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 no. You good? I come back. Yeah. That seems important. Okay, Go ahead, gotcha. All right. So the new transition. All right. So the, you asked me a question right before that too. What was the question you asked me right before can she that? Gonna, can she be saved? Be right, right before that. All right. I, really I want to get back to that. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So according to the scriptures, from the time that the law was given, there was two Gentiles that was cleaving unto Israel, and they also got saved. You get Isaiah chapter 58. We can get into that real quick. It'll, it'll say that. No, I, just, I believe that non-Jewish people. Yeah. Are, yeah. yeah. If they found the, the, the Noahide laws, which is something that was actually spread and shared during the teachers at that time, the rabbis at the time, which is that they kept the Noahide laws, which we see in Acts chapter 15, that Gentiles also would be declared um, righteous before the Most High, because they may not have the gospel, but they're doing what they believe to be true in their heart. Sure. So we got the same thing in Romans chapter 2, verse 24 to 26, where Paul says that those who are circumcised, if a person is uncircumcised and keep and do the same things of the law, will then not also be received as well. Absolutely. Exactly. So there is still a standard of righteousness that's universal that is not closed-minded to strictly to what was going on so in that context. Right. So what did Paul say in Romans about those who follow the law? Which, which, give me a verse. Romans chapter 3? Romans chapter 3. 
he says, what, what good is it of being a Jew? He said, by much every way, the oracles of God was actually entrusted to the Jews. And then he moves on and talks about the Gentiles as well. Yeah, is well, that what you're talking about? What's the big problem that the Jews and the Gentiles have? Can we get out? Let's read it. And you know the text. No, you can bring out this big word. You can bring out this. This is the shortest so, so word. Is there, is there salvation through the law? Yes or no? Is there salvation just, through the law? Real quick. Salvation. No, it's not salvation. Well, it's people that keep the law and die and they don't make it in. Okay. Matter of fact, God judged people who kept the law and did unrighteous things. So, no, it's so, difficult for people to keep everything because you're not in the context where you're in your sovereignty to actually walk it out. Okay. You're outside of the land. There's no temple. There's no priest. But it's it's a cultural thing. And I'll get back into that moment. It's a cultural mandate. Uh, right? Because as it's, as it's broken down, because there's, there's various streams of theological circles that talk about the moral law, the civil law, right? And you say, okay, what's moral, what's civil, what's ceremonial? Yeah. And my, the question would be, Depending on your domination, some people say, well, there's parts of the civil we can still keep today. There's parts of the ceremonial that we can still keep today. Let's, let's, because Jews keep ceremonial parts of the law today, right? Let's, let's, number. let's okay, go to go your text, Romans 3. You want to call us the God No, Romans you brought 3. Romans 3. I brought Romans 10 and Romans 11. Because no, he asked about the Gentiles. Whole, I was going to Romans the chapter 11. Read, 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 read the 10. Yeah, 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 read the 10. Yeah, okay. But now, quite apart from Torah, God's way of making people righteous in his sight has been made clear mm -hmm. although the torah and the prophets give their witness to it as well mm -hmm. so we agree on it mm -hmm. it is a righteousness that comes from god mm -hmm. through the faithfulness mm -hmm. of come on say it with me say it with me faithfulness uh, of yeshua the messiah, yeshua mm -hmm. the messiah mm -hmm. to all who continue what trusting trusting for it makes no Difference mm -hmm. whether one is what a Jew or Gentile, since all have and, and come short to earning God's praise. So we all need. Who? He, he talks about the wall of partition being broken down because what wound up happening was initially when the Israelites was in the land and it was in their sovereignty, there was you, you watching. Yeah. So the, me, uh, oh, you want to you want you can watch and film yeah, 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 yeah. too. Just, no, 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 it's cool. I'm just, yeah. uh, just interested oh. in comments. We're not to be lawless. The press has done. A, a job I'm not even reading that, right? I'm trying to focus on the conference. Yeah. Be, be good. But I should say, if you want to hold the camera, you can record a talk and right. you can oh, read yeah. the talk. Tell me. <laughs> you want me to switch it? You want me to turn it on? You mm. tell me. Okay, so let me. This so, all right, so let me address that. All right, so Paul talks about the wall of petition that has been set up between the Jew and the Gentile, right? Okay. That wall of petition was something that was created over time when the Jews came back and they went and settled in. Jerusalem and they built the city, the wall, etc. And what they were doing was they had a distrust of the Gentiles. A lot of that was promulgated by the um, the Greek or Greco Roman occupation. Hold on, let me, let me so what, pause I'm, you I'm for about to, two seconds, question, Sean, because you're giving me information about historical yes, facts you that need, distinguish between but you need Jews that as a Gentiles. preface before you read. And this. I got the preface. Mm -hmm. Now this is what I want you to know. After the preface is stated, when he says it makes no difference mm -hmm. whether one is Jew, mm -hmm. observant, mm -hmm. circumcised, mm -hmm. Hebrew Israelite, if you want, or <laughs> Gentile, uh -huh. you tell me what Paul is saying when he says it makes no difference. I don't even know what they're saying. Now, so. Somebody telling you to take us to school, bro. <laughs> And somebody <laughs> said that we're taking the law to accept the dollar. Uh, we just, we just having a freestyle discussion. Right? What's your name, by the way? My name is Ron. Ron, Trail. Nice to meet you, bro. Trail. Trail. Nice yeah. to meet you. What's your name? Rob. 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 Nice to meet you, Rob. Just Rob. tell me what, what right, does so it mean wait. to make no difference? Okay, gotcha. You say it's I know. Yeah. Really and that's what I'm saying. Like, if you perceived anything other than that, then you can go to Yeah. So, um, all right, so that's why I was trying to give you the context so you can see why when Paul's on the scene being a Pharisee is a Pharisee and he's speaking about this. So used to what make a difference was, is what you tell yeah, well, did because... But Paul at this time saying it don't make a difference. Yeah, because Paul's giving you a, a, a gospel, right? So behind the context of that, you have a situation where the Greeks occupied Palestine, right? And when the Greeks occupied Palestine, you read the book of 1st Maccabees and 2nd Maccabees, you see that the, the Antiochus had desecrated the temple by slaughtering a pig on the altar. When that happened, there was the Maccabean Revolt, and from there, the Hasmonean dynasty was established where they fought against the Greeks. So now you have a situation where there's a distrust of people outside of their own community because they're not even holding to their customs and respecting it. When the Persians conquered them, the Persians didn't do that. They allowed them to have their religion. As we see in the book of Esther, you brought it, right? You brought the book of Esther, right? They, they was like, okay, cool. We're going to let you do your religion. Just pay your tribute and we'll leave you alone. The Greeks did not do that. It was a different thing that was going on. So now you got to think about the distrust that they have against people that's outside of their community or their ethnic group and why we're entering the situation where now Paul is looking at this and saying, wait a second, y'all are forgetting where in the Old Testament, 
Gentiles were allowed to cleave unto Israel. They were allowed to cleave unto Israel. But now, because of the hardness of the hearts of a lot of people who were Jews at that time, because he was going against the Jews in the book of Galatians, he was saying, listen, don't let nobody tell you you guys have to do A, B, C, F, and G because believing on Christ, you guys can be saved. That was the gospel that he had gave to the Gentiles. The message going to the Jews was slightly different. That's why I was I was oh, explaining you, to you about the gospel you of the kingdom. You show me the slightly different part for the Jews right here in this text. Oh, you want me to do it only in the book of you ain't got Romans to, we three? Can, you can keep scrolling, but I want you to do it in this text. Because <laughs> if Paul so, contradicts himself somewhere else, we might as well no. both go ahead and sit down well, that's and, not and give up. That's not true. We all, well, I'm going to go sit there down somewhere go. else <laughs> and go sit down if Paul is contradicting so, himself. But so you look. show me. Where he says something different for the Jews. Okay, so are you, are you want to start up? I'm paying attention. All right, so we start up here. I got it. Right? What are we talking the about? Class what time does it start? You Don't said worry. at 7, 10, You got to pay your money. No, no I, want, I want to pay my money. <laughs> you got to pay your money. <laughs> as you see, and I'm, you come I'm even there. willing, of course, I'm even willing to patronize. As I, I go to events like this all the time. This is nothing new to me. You okay, know what I'm saying? Sure. All right, so look. He says here. Then what advantage has the Jew? What is the value of being circumcised? Much, much in every way. So he's saying, well, people saying, well, what's the advantage of being Jew being circumcised? Much in every way. And the first way the Jews were entrusted with the very words of God. If some of them were unfaithful, so what? Does this faithfulness cancel God's faithfulness? Heaven forbid, God would be true if everyone were a liar, as the Tanakh says, so that you, God, may be proved right in your words, etc. So now, if our unrighteousness highlights unrighteousness highlights God's righteousness what should we say that God is unrighteous to inflict his anger on us meaning those who are keeping the law right heaven forbid else how could God judge the world without the law how can he judge the world because it says here that what was given to the Jews the very words of God and what was the very words given to them what Moses received at Mount Sinai so that is the method in which people are judged Yes, no. Keep on reading. No, we're going to keep going, but I'm just saying. Okay, so we're reading for context now. Contextual well, analysis, you, right? All right, so let's context. go down. Keep All right. <laughs> let's go down. Let's go down. So, are we Jews better off? Not entirely. For I have already made the charge that all people, Jews and Gentiles alike, are controlled by sin, as the Tanakh puts it. There is no one righteous, not even one. No one understands. No one seeks God. All have turned away. At the same time, because become useless. You got to go to or you go? Good? Okay. <laughs> um, their throats are open graves, blah, blah, blah. This is, he's quoting from Isaiah, right? Moreover, we know that whatever the Torah says, it says to those living within the framework of Torah in order that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world be shown to deserve God's adverse judgment. So what's the purpose of the law? So the purpose of the Jews is to show through God's righteousness on the world. Mm -hmm. Through our own righteousness, yeah. he can still be righteous. Through their observance of the through law. Through observance of the law, it right? It shows that God, what? He says, um, stop and the whole world be shown to deserve God's adverse judgment. So, so the, the Jews, Jews were used to bring God out. To show us that we, what? Deserve what? God's judgment. All right. Make oh, yeah. God. But, I mean, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a great even, advantage. That, the word that, of God said that they can tell us that we all need a Savior. But that's not what it says from here. God's judgment. It didn't. It didn't. It but didn't if, say we, that. if we endanger God's judgment, you <laughs> uh -huh. tell me what can we do? Oh, it's a lot you can do. What can we do? Well, I'm in danger yeah, yeah, yeah. of God's judgment because I failed to observe the Torah. You I failed the Torah. to do it so right. So if you absorb the Torah, I well, failed that, in one wait, area. If you I failed in all. Well, that's James. That's something separate. We, we're gonna stay but within context. But it's scripture. It's word. Hold on. So wait, we're trying to stay within context. I'm just saying, if I'm in danger, uh -huh. tell me what I need. It depends on who you are. It depends on who I am. Yeah. It's, what does he say here? What does he say here? He, it he, says he it doesn't never, depend on who you are. But he never are. told them to stop keeping the Torah. I didn't say he told anybody to stop keeping the Torah. You asked. You're moving on to a practical oh. application of scripture. Yeah, we're getting into that. As I'm well. asking you about salvation. That's not, not the same thing. You gotta no, walk it out, right? No, brother. There's a difference. What's the difference? There's a difference between how I live mm -hmm. and how I became in right relationship with God. Justification. That's your right relationship. Correct. How you live is what sanctification. He has to bring us into right relationship. We have a problem. Mm -hmm. Problem is we're in wrong relationship with him. And that was based on what? People turning astray from the law, right? From the law, whether it was the law given to the Jews mm -hmm. or the law that God wrote in our hearts, Romans chapter 1. So according all of Romans us stand two. condemned, both Jew and Gentile. According to, according right? to the law, gotcha. we stand condemned. According to the law in our heart, we stand condemned. So according wait, to Jesus, no, we stand on, condemned. Wait, wait, Brother, wait, I have wait, a hold problem. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have hold a problem. Slow down a second. Well, actually, Do you I, agree we have this problem? That we sinned, we fall short before God. People fall short all the time. And that God has a judgment. But here's the question. When you go back to the law, every law was not purported to bring you the death penalty. 
there were things that you did that made you unclean or things that you did that separated you from the rest of the camp. That does not mean that you're in judgment of death because those were not laws that were capital offenses. So there's a distinction even when it comes to the law and all of that did not pertain to people that had to die for committing an act, what's called sin, so, right? So we go to the, if we, if we read the Old Testament, I'm gonna stay it makes right it in clear. The text was Romans 6.23. <laughs> so wait, so wait, so the context. Romans 6.23. So now you're gonna, wait, I, I I'm told in the you, same book I told you. you Romans 10 and Romans 11. I wanna go to Romans 11 about the wild olive branch so we can get into what we was talking about as far as grafting in the Gentiles. Hey, we gotta give you the, the pre-context right. before we get to your context. And that's what I was trying to give you preface yeah, before so we got Romans into Romans 6.23. <laughs> I'm right, talking so, about context and scriptures. You well, telling yeah, me about? I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm telling you about scriptures Telling me too. about First, Second Maccabees, which I appreciate. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, if you go, I appreciate you go, the it's funny, lesson. right? It's funny. If you yeah, go into the Torah, the I was telling you that there were some capital offenses, and there you, were things that were not capital offenses. I'm, and I'm telling you, what is what does Paul say in Romans six twenty three? Ah, oh, man. So we're not even going to get into the context before we get into the what is Paul saying? The actual text. This is so the look, context. So bring up six twenty three real quick. For the wages. Of sin is death. Sin. Go ahead. It's death. And the gift is what? Through Jesus, Jesus Christ. Is, okay, so so keep going. Bones, bro. Huh? Bones. <laughs> nah, anymore. I used to way back in the day. I don't play. No, it's not going to keep you the kingdom. I don't know, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it might keep me out the kingdom. <laughs> I just want you. I want you. You don't want to keep me out the kingdom? I just want you. Okay. We might not agree, but I want you. No, no, no. Go ahead. Me and you, if our Christ. Mm-hmm. We are in danger of God's judgment. Wow. Now, so whether you observe the law, so here's the question. The so everybody, so everybody who has not got the gospel, they're in danger of hellfire as well, right? Everybody, everybody's gonna be judged. Is in danger of God's so judgment. What, so who's gonna save them if they never heard the gospel and they die? Hey, you so asking me so about so what else? I'm talking person? about. You that happens not. today. There's people that's living right now that haven't gotten the gospel and they're dying. So they How are they getting judgment? God judges us on account. Law, moral law in our hearts. So you don't need Jesus then for salvation if you're judging a moral law and you die without it. Right. Ain't another man a person who kept the law. No, not the law, but their culture. Everybody's not going to be exposed to what's called the Jewish law. Some people have their own culture. They're going to never find a perfect person. Take any culture. Oh, no, we didn't say want. perfect. I didn't say that word perfect. Hey, but the wages of sin is death. Nobody man. is perfect, but there's people still considered righteous even though they wasn't perfect. Noah was considered righteous and he wasn't perfect. Enoch was considered righteous and he wasn't perfect. Elijah was considered righteous and he wasn't perfect. These folks had faith in God. Yeah, and then they and kept the law too. You, that was their need, culture. I'm telling you, you need faith in God. <laughs> I have faith and in God the Most High. God has revealed to us that you need faith in you. <laughs> Wait, He told you that right now? <laughs> oh, in the Bible. No, I'm saying, did He give you a word right now to give to me? A <laughs> rhema word that He's going to give you to give to me? I don't got a rhema. You can make me rhema. If you want to make it rhema, that's <laughs> That means a word specifically for you. Yeah, that's I what I was saying, a rhema. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> but no, am I holding you up or are you good? I don't want to hold y'all up. You know what I'm saying? He brought the whole discussion up. I was just trying to find out what y'all about. We're in danger of judgment, bro. <laughs> now we got we to gotta get context. He don't want to baby. I just want some real moments. And I answered your question, right? When you asked me. What question? And I explained it to you. You said it to the law. No, I said by cleaving unto Israel. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, is Jesus Christ an Israelite? Yes or no? And if you believe in him, you're going to get salvation, correct? Is that cleaving unto Israel, becoming one with Jesus Christ? Now you know that's the word game. Wait, how's that a word game? Israel. Yeah, cleaving, cleaving to Israel. Israel. Yeah, that's not a word game. That's in the scripture, actually. You want to pull it out? What do you mean by cleaving? Cleaving, cleaving means coming near to. Look, we, I agree with look, you. Look. You say cleaving to Jesus. There you go. You read Romans chapter three, right? And it talked about God's judgment. So if there's people that's outside of the scope of the Israelites, and they learn about God's judgment. We have examples of that with Ruth, right? So Ruth was a Moabite, correct? And she said to Naomi, when her when her husband died, Naomi said, hey, go away. What did she say? She said, no, I'm going to cleave unto you, and your God is going to be my God. So she followed in the ways of Naomi. Yes, no? I absolutely Okay. And also Rahab, who was the prostitute. She wasn't an Israelite, but she heard what the Most High have done for the Israelites and redeeming them, and she cleaved. Un- I'm people. explaining. I got you. But yeah. I said the one thing they all have in common mm-hmm. is that they have faith in God's revealed word. Exactly. And today we have to have faith in God's revealed word. That word is Jesus Christ. Okay, and then I. I we, was, we agree. Yeah, we was going into the Book of Matthew, right? What's that? The word is Jesus Christ. The Book of Matthew. 
and Matthew and Romans. <laughs> take a take a New Testament. Let's go. Book. Let's go. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter. I mean, at Matthew chapter fifteen and four. You got your the Bible on it. Yeah, we go to Matthew chapter fifteen. That's my last one for you. All right, and then we. <laughs> That's my last. We can talk about regular stuff. We ain't just got to talk about this. I was really interested just, in the theme of the conference. No, I got you. I'm, not, I'm just saying this is my last. This is my last. That's what I'm really you. interested in. Because Hold you, on, do that face again. Let them see the face. <laughs> I got him. You know, in my opinion, uh -huh. you ain't explained one of these verses yet. Yeah, I did. How did I explain it? That makes no difference between <laughs> Jew and Greek. You just jumped all around. No, 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 that, bro. no, no, I didn't. Because I mean, cause you can have a conversation I'm a, for your I'm, friends. No, no, no. I'm no. having a conversation. I feel with you. you. I'm not even and talking I'm to them. you that you didn't so jump over all my verses. I'm a, no, no. I'm gonna give you the uh, uh, context. You told me Jesus only went to to to, to the people of Israel, and did. I showed you he went to people from all nations. He did. When did he do that? He didn't do that. You said Jesus told sent his disciples only to the lost of Israel. Matthew ten. You told I gave that to you. Yeah. And you read it, right? And I read you that Jesus sent his disciples to all people from all nations. Why? Because the Israelites were scattered. You said they wasn't They're scattered. Israelites. Israelites. They have a word for Israelite in the Greek. Oh, of course they do. It's not there. Wait, hold on. <laughs> we didn't even read it in the Greek yet. <laughs> I got you the Greek here. You, okay, let's you get it. Greek. Greek. I get it. That makes you feel better. It, may, it does make me Please feel better because uh, I'm. Can you read so, it in the Greek? Oh, yeah, if you want me to. You want me to get it in the Hebrew too? I get it to no, you no, both. It ain't in Hebrew. Greek? Okay. We don't want a translation. Wait, hold on. That's not a translation? Wait a second. I'm sure it is. I'm sure he probably knows Greek too, right? No, I mean, he's look at him. Look at him. Look, 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 look at his face. I, I know he did. Look, look, look. I just don't know. <laughs> 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 Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> All right. So we get Matthew, what, chapter 28? 28, 19? That's the one you wanted? Yeah, great. What y'all call it? <laughs> but what? We call it Great Commission. What y'all call it? I mean, I guess if you want to use, use that word Great Commission, that's fine. Is that you know, yeah, but see that, but that word is not there. But that's just something we're calling what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's yeah. What we call it. So, is that, is that anything that I mean, I'm not opposed to that because that is a commission. It's like, yo, go and bring this gospel to all the world. Yeah, yeah. All but, the world. But your, yeah. but your brethren are scattered there, and they need to get this Where message. What the brethren at? Where the brethren at? So no, if you go to, if you go to Acts chapter two, that's what I'm about to say. Act like you just throw that in there. I'm not icing you. No, no, I'm trying to give you context. <laughs> you know you, I, you know, go get your followers. No, I'm not even talking Think about it for a second. I am. I'm not did even you, talking about it. Did you that. not just have to throw that in there? Nah, did you feel well, like you had to throw nah, that I didn't in feel there? Like, I, didn't, I didn't really feel like that. I'm not I saying that, that it don't make sense okay. from other stuff. I'm just saying, didn't it feel like you slipped the brethren in there? Be honest. Yeah. Be honest. You can't be honest with yeah. Turn the video off. So Turn the video off and be honest with no, I feel you. I feel you. I be honest with you when, when I read your first verse mm -hmm. that your point made sense and I just stuck with it. You I did. didn't try to change the and interpretation change of your either. verse. No, no, I moved to a different verse. And you, and you I said your exact interpretation gotcha. and you because said, I agree with you. And you said that the word people was in there, right? You give me the Greek word that's interpreted people. I'm not the Greek scholar. No, I'm not a Greek so scholar either. I'm not saying I'm not a Greek scholar. You know what I'm saying. You I'm, just, me the word. I'm just saying when we and he should be able to explain this too if he's if he's in Greek linguistics. But when you're going to do a translation, it should be only with the data that's there, right? Sometimes things are added for context. So the word people is not there. You can look at it yourself. No, just no, to help you. I out. can't read Greek. You don't have you to read it. Just read what's there. I don't see what you're talking about. All right, about. so look, get Matthew 20 in your phone, and we're going to go through it in Greek real quick. And I'm going to show you the word people is not there. That's something that was inserted. It's not there. That translation inserted people. So you just read it here. Having gone, therefore, disciple all the nations. It doesn't say people there. And if it was, the word that would be there for people, it's okay. not there. So, the, so, they, they, so that changes. They have, that changes the, they have people there that with, changes, with that, nations. That changes the context. They have people there with nations, so we don't have to. So to take people out. We don't have to keep people. We can stick with your nations. So then that's what I'm saying. Now you're getting, you tell me how that Greek word nations refers to Jewish No, he said, having gone, therefore. No, 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 no. Tell me where you got your insertion what? of your brother. I'm, I'm about to explain that to uh, you. Go ahead. All right. Where is that? It says, having gone, therefore, disciple all. The word panta, there's all. The word pan in Greek means all. Mm -hmm. All the mm -hmm. ta ethne. Ethne. The means the other nations. Ta brothers? No, no, no. Okay. Brothers it's is not ta. Uh, no, no. So brothers brother would be like. Ta. No, no, no. No. Aldefi. You got um, Adolphos. Okay. That means brother in Greek. It's brother right? in the all. No. It's the word panta, which means all. It's in a, it's in panta a is, does panta mean it can't be a Gentile? 
It, maybe a yeah. convert that's cleaving unto Israel. Yeah, so, why so not? So all don't mean all no more. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say that. Okay, moving I'm, on. I'm saying, I'm saying it could be a cleaving Gentile unto Israel. See, bro. The only way for them to get salvation is they cleave unto an Israel. Even if you call it Jesus Christ, you're still cleaving unto an Israel. You see how much? You see how much, see how much extra? Ex huh? In, to any Israelite? No, no, no. Oh. Not just any Israelite. Nah, you somebody got to be walking extra right. explanation. You got to throw in each of these words. Why well, I can say all. And I can say the, and I can nations. say nations. You can't just say that. You gotta add the brothers so look, and the scattered <laughs> and the Israel. Because I'm giving I'm you just context. Saying. No, I feel no, because no, your context is not the context of Matthew. Why not? No, because he says all nations. But who is Matthew writing to? He says all. Matthew's nations. writing to his own people, right? You tell me who. Yeah, Matthew that's is. that was his audience. I thought the audience. And you see colloquialisms. No, no, it wasn't Christian. The word Christian is not even in the book of Matthew. He's I, writing. I didn't, I didn't say it was. I didn't say the word Christian was in the book. No, of it's in the Bible, but it's not in the book of Matthew. I didn't, I didn't say that the word was in the book. <laughs> I said. I'm trying to give you context you of what he was writing who to. He was writing to. He was writing to. I thought the gospel was written you really to. Really, only, only got like three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. All right. Do you need to do something before that? Because I'm about to go in and got, enjoy this. You got three minutes. Three minutes. All right. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> why not? You know why? Because they're talking about subjects that pertain to what's going on in our community. So, of course, I want to hear that. Yeah. Reparations, right? In, it's Christianity, a white man's religion. In, I know, I know. In two minutes, you tell me how you got the brethren out of these Greek words. All right. So, I'm saying when he sent them to go in Matthew chapter 10, mm -hmm. that same context was kept. So, after he died, he commissioned them to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He also told them in the book of Matthew to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This was the opportunity. Opportunity from the go and contact the lost sheep in the house of Israel. Get Acts, last scripture. Get Acts, chapter eleven. I'm gonna no, show you what I'm talking about. Scripture. Let me. No, 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 no. This no, no that was your last scripture. Now my last scripture <laughs> is Acts chapter eleven. Go get Acts chapter eleven real quick, yeah, and then. The last one I'm okay, go ahead, go ahead. Last one you pull up. Get Acts chapter eleven. You gonna do the same thing? No, no, no. I'm gonna explain this. You get Acts chapter eleven. With brother I'm gonna Greek. let scripture interpret scripture. Get Acts chapter eleven. No, 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 no. That's a different hermeneutic <laughs> than what you said. No, it's not. You said you were gonna show me in the Greek. No, 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 no. Where the brother is. I said I was gonna show you in the Greek. The word people is not there. Somebody added that right, to that translation. Nations, there. So you nations is there. Nations and I'm going to explain it to you. Can you get Acts chapter 11? Real quick. That's, that's not like, an explanation. Yes, it is. Word. Get Acts chapter 11. You're not telling me nothing about the Greek I'm, word. I'm giving I you, want you to tell me about I the Greek word. I told the Greek word is Panta means all and Ethne means nations. That's what I was trying to tell you. And tell me about what Panta we mean. We don't, have, mean. we don't have additional data there to determine it. So that's why when you say it's Gentiles only, I'm saying it's Jews. I didn't say it's Gentiles. Okay, so you so you include the scattered Israelites, right? Exclude all nations, bro. I'm so, including what it says. Gotcha. So I'm saying when he says the word all to all the nations, therefore disciple all the nations, it's because there's Israelites that scattered to all the nations. We want to see the application of this word, and Acts chapter 11 showed you the application of this commission right here. Please get Acts chapter 11, and I promise I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not oh my God! All right, let me get Acts chapter eleven. Two minutes. Yes, please. Acts chapter right, eleven, real quick. Let's do Acts chapter eleven too. All right, so Acts chapter eleven. We're gonna already gather. He's gonna do the same thing. <laughs> no, I'm not. This one. I'm gonna let the scripture interpret itself. So. You wait. You added words. I didn't. Add, you added words by reading the translation. You read a translation that had an added word. You added words. Nah, you, you read a translation that had an added word. I asked you about the Greek word, and, and you, I went into it for and you. You said you ain't go into it. Yeah, I said they had to disciple all the nations, and he tells them what to do, what that commission is. With, with chapter one, verse eleven. No, Acts chapter eleven. Yeah, yeah, Acts chapter eleven. Chapter eleven. Mm-hmm. All right. Verse. I'm gonna tell you we're gonna jump down to. Let me grab it over here too, so I can read with verse. you. Okay, Acts chapter 11. Let this load up. So we're going to read it together. Okay? Which verse? All right, hold on. We're going to get down. Which verse? Hold on. Let me get you. All right, starting here. All right, now read verse 19. We read from you. Meanwhile, those scattered by the persecution that began with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. Speaking the message only to read Jews. that one more time. And then, the wait, 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 Jews, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. This is the scattered disciples that received this message in Matthew chapter 28. And when they got scattered, they went only to the Jews. Please read that one more time. I got you. No, but I agree. Okay, you agree? So wait, so then what happened? So remember, that, and remember, wait, 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 wait. Remember what I said a long time ago? <laughs> remember I said Paul's I'm not in Matthew chapter 28. I'm about the command of Jesus, uh -huh. not the failures of men. But how is that a failure of men when That's they actually... How they're acting? Wait. So what they doing here is a failure. It's a failure. Yeah, yeah. Whoa! But they they just following Jesus' message though. Yeah, Peter Peter had to get called by in the same book 
just the last chapter, he get, had to get called by a dream by God gotcha. to go and preach the Gentiles. And then when they got... Because he didn't want to, because he was racist. So what? They got scattered. They went to other nations, and they only brought the message to their own people, which is the Jews. Listen, bro. And I'm telling you, that's a failure. Nah, dang. So they failed at this mission? What was Jesus' command in Matthew 28? And this is what they're doing right here. Go to all nations. And that's what they did. They was going to the nations, and they brought the message only to the Jews in those nations. You just read it. Didn't God send Peter to some Gentiles? He sent them to Cornelius. A Gentile. A Gentile, correct. Then he sent Paul to Gentiles? Yeah, much Didn't the later church on. commission him to Gentiles? Did the church what? Commission him to Gentiles. You don't want to say they commissioned him. Oh, Paul. you know. No, I'm saying Paul. Paul to yeah, Gentiles. Yeah, the council did. And after, like, so it looks saying. like they are... Oh, no, I'm going to... So it looks after like... After this is over... I want to. I'd love to put them on camera so like and have a discussion. And actually, you see people not going to Gentiles. You see people going to Gentiles. Yes, but what I'm saying is, that Matthew, I'm saying Jesus commanded them to go to all nations. Yeah, and what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that Gentiles cannot get into the kingdom. That's not what I said. They can't. I didn't go say to that. I said you and I are in danger of death mm -hmm. without Jesus Christ, as I said. Gotcha. Both of us. Both of us. Both of us. Nah, you. He wrong. He wrong. The brother know he's wrong. He nah, added nah, all the he words. Said he just got to on to envy you who is walking in the law. Mom, don't help him out. No, trust me. He know it. The brother I said, know if you cleave wrong. unto Israel. To Israel. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. He already knows. Oh, you, you playing? You, you're done? All right, go ahead. We got to go back in.